Welcome to the Printer Prop Shop. I'm Michael. So today we've got a prop that goes on your feet. So I don't have any shoes right off hand that I could lace these up with, but I had a customer hit me through my Facebook page and he had found this model online and wanted to go and have these printed up and painted up and put on for his shoes. I personally, I don't know anything about these. Um, I have seen similar things to do with anime and things like that, but this was a first for me. This is the first shoe prop I've ever made. And uh, I, I call it a prop because if you were to do cosplay or something like that, um, maybe you're doing an anime or maybe just whoever your, your movie is based on um, or the main story in your movie revolves around the shoes or they have a, a fancy set of shoes, um, this would be a prop, yeah. Um, turned out relatively easy. It wasn't incredibly difficult. I probably wouldn't do this as, as far as your first go. Um, it did take some time. I had some uh, printing failures and then just some ways to orient the print. But here's how I did it. So pretty straightforward here. Um, here's the actual model all in one piece um, on Cura. And I was just showing this on how it was going to print if, had I printed it all in one piece. And the one piece would have worked, but for me, it just, I couldn't find an orientation that would work with the least amount of support structures. And it, I, I honestly think it would have just been a mess and a hassle just to go and sand. So I decided to split it into a couple different pieces here. I threw it into my slicer program and I did try a couple of different attempts. I tried on the X axis and then I ended up uh, going with the Y axis. It just seemed a little bit more feasible, feasible and easier to print. I figured too this was going to be on your feet. So if it was to go and get snagged on something or actually break, it would be covered in fiberglass, but the stress point would already be there. This would be the, the most um, critical place that it would probably break. And I would rather have a clean break than a shattered break, if that makes any sense. And these were actually easier to lay down as well. They didn't take too much support underneath. They were still curved, but they, they printed much better. And as far as time goes, I, I saved a little bit of time. I mean, I, I was looking at 19 hours a piece compared to, you know, it was probably taking me maybe 15 hours total on all of them. So this, this right here was showing 16 hours, but it wasn't gonna take that. It was gonna take a lot longer than that. And here I pulled out my Dremel. If you don't have a Dremel, pick one up. They're, uh, they're much easier for sanding and things like that. It, especially if you've got some harsh sanding like I did for the support that was underneath. It was really small support when I printed those uh, pieces flat. So it, it, it was a little rougher to take off. It wouldn't just come off with a pair of pliers or um, snips or anything like that. So I just did some basic sanding with it. And as you can tell, I'm, I'm going back and forth with it and doing a light touch with it because it is a, a really rough piece of sandpaper that's on there. Now it has these little accent holes on the side. And uh, the easiest way, because there was support structure in there, the easiest way was just to go and drill them out. And fairly straightforward, I just got a drill bit that was pretty close to the size of the hole without going larger than the hole um, so that I didn't ruin it. But um, just drilled through carefully. Um, wasn't even running the drill at full speed or anything like that, just running it with a light touch. Now I just decided to add this um, to let you know that there were some rough areas that I did pull out a file on. And again, to pick up a file kit, they're fairly cheap on Amazon. They come with all different sizes and uh, coarseness with them and it runs maybe $15 for the actual set. Really cheap. And I did pull out my snips here just to get into those little areas for the back little accent pieces that go in the back towards the heel. 
Um, it did have some support structure in there, but it was easily to come out with the snips. And uh, again, two snips you can pick up anywhere on Amazon relatively cheap. Even a hardware store, you can pick them up for less than $5. So this is the main basis of this whole build here. Um, fiberglass. I love the fiberglass resin. It adds so much strength to your, uh, to your product without adding tons of weight. Now again, too, this may end up breaking um, on the actual side points if it was to go and get smashed into something or um, possibly snagged on something, it might rip off. Um, the actual person that's receiving these needs to be a little careful. But as far as the fiberglass resin goes, you, you put in a couple drops, don't make a whole lot, um, do it in batches, and then uh, simply paint it on. I, I did use a little bit of sponge brush. Now those sometimes I'll use. Um, I don't use them a whole lot because they have a tendency to break off and now you've got sponge mixed in with your resin. I do like using the smaller paint brushes. Again, too, if you use a paintbrush, it's lost forever after this. You're, you're not going to be able to use it again. But if you look at some of my other videos, I do link the paint brushes I use. Um, you can get them in bulk on Amazon for 10 bucks. I want to say there's like 20 or 30 of them in there and relatively cheap. But I, my biggest concern here, too, was I wanted to stay away from the actual the holes on the sides. Um, as far as getting fiberglass in them because those were lacing holes at the top, all those slits. So I did end up throwing on a couple of coats of paint, but you've seen that before out of me in the past, so I didn't really focus on that too much. I, I did some wet sanding and things like that and filed out the lace holes. But here I'm putting the padding on the inside of the uh, shoe there and uh, just tracing it around with, um, with just with a fabric pen. Um, I picked up the foam, it's really thin foam, and the fabric pin. I picked them both up at Hobby Lobby, relatively cheap. I want to say the foam's maybe a dollar for a sheet this big. And then uh, once I got my tracing done, I went and uh, just rough cutted it with a pair of scissors. Standard scissors, that's the great thing about foam. You can cut it with just a pair of scissors. And again, too, this foam, it, it serves a couple of different purposes. For one, this is going around a pair of shoes, and most likely if you're wearing this, it's probably around a pair of nice shoes. Um, I don't know the, the actual customer's um, shoes yet, but um, I'm sure he probably takes care of his shoes as well. So it not only serves the purpose of protecting the shoes, but it also makes my job a little bit easier because then I don't have to work so hard on the inside, which is a very, very high plus for me. Um, so I went and just cut them out um, really rough and then uh, hot glued them onto the sides of the soles and then I did eventually go back and put in um, just some gel super glue um, about the only way you can really bond these to there without maybe some actual cement um, I didn't have any any regular cement around um, for like foam cement I'm not even sure. I've never even tried putting foam cement onto a 3D print. So I'm not really sure on how well that would work out. But it looks like it's holding. Um, the nice thing too is that should it ever peel off, it's not going to take anything to put it right back on. Just a little bit of super glue or hot glue and you're good to go and back on your feet. I did go back and cut the slits for the actual lace holes. All those slits that you see on the side are all for laces. So, and then I did sand those out with files and things like that. Made sure that you could put flat laces through. It's gonna be a little tough to put the, the little um, inlet on the end of your lace on there, but we'll see how he, how he does with it. Um, once I did go and get my rough cut all attached to the side, I went back over it with a very, very sharp knife. I learned this from Odin. His number one, number one tip is if you're going to work with foam, use a really sharp knife. So I went out and got some new blades, um, really sharp blades in fact. I, I did come out unscathed. I didn't have any cuts um, on, my, on my body at all, but I did go back over and uh, trimmed them out and that was that was it they were good to go so guys that's how I did it if you want to make props for your shoes um, 
I could honestly say that this wouldn't be too tough to model if you had the pair of shoes that you wanted and you took the measurements. I couldn't see that it would be too tough to model any kind of design you wanted. Um, I would say as far as these go, he's probably going to need a, a fairly flat lace to go through them because that's the way the, the design is done. But if you're looking for a prop for your shoes for your next movie, here it is. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and go out and build something. We'll see you next time.